now she's a happy bead. Who wants to sing um yellow no wait is it yellow clouds brown rain? How you stop? Once upon a time there was a young man who lived under a bridge. Now every day he would fish under that bridge and all he would catch a small minnow to eat. Unfortunately for him, he was also tempted quite badly because there was a bakery nearby. And every day as he was eating that miserable small fish, he would think about the bakery and think and think of all the cooked baked goods inside and he would catch up a bunch of evil plans of how to become that cupcake thief. <laughs> His first mission, to steal the fresh baked big chocolate cupcakes that came out every day at exactly 7 o'clock. But since he was old, older times, it was more of a piece of, gla a piece of grass, which he used to measure the shadow of the sun and said to himself, now it's 7 o'clock. Also, he could tell by the smell of the chocolate, the, the chocolate cupcakes that come out every day at the same time. So he thought to himself for a long time, he said, before I become a thief, I must read on how to become a thief. I must hear, I've heard from how to people how to become a thief. And that was very wise. Eh? Eh? I mean, being a cupcake thief is not wise. I mean... He's the, studying about it before he does it. What? That's yeah. a wise idea. I mean... Okay. You should, would you let me use wise in, in, in my state? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing as that. So he thought to himself, you know, I heard a thief it will record down everything that uh, his his uh, his prey would do, you know his quarry. So he said, "Okay, today instead of eating the the fish I caught, I'll go into town and try to dig around the garbage." So his education to become a cupcake thief began by shifting through the garbage cans every day. I did finally came across what I was looking for. Aha! There's a bunch of scrap of paper, and what I'll do is, what I'll do is, I'll take this here fishbone and use a rock to hammer in the side, so it become a book. Wait, <laughs> what? That was his makeshift teeth record book. So every day, he would write down what the baker and the baker's daughter would do. He would sit, sit next to the bridge, and one, one hand, both his hands on the fishing pole, but his. But one, but one of his eyes would always wander towards the baker, the baker's shop, while watching it and scouting out the place. Ah, morning he bake, morning he rolls the chocolate into the dough. Then he bakes, then he makes the pretzel bread. Ah, then he makes the cheese sticks. What's the point of looking if you? What's the point of making a book if you're not gonna write in it? <laughs> that was what he thought. After, that's why that, that's what the question he asked himself after two weeks, and he went back to look at the book and thought. Why hasn't anything been written, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna be wise on him, you know. <laughs> Why hasn't anything been written, huh? <laughs> so he thought, you know, what the fudge is going on? The book is broken, I'm doing it wrong. So he decided to go into town and ask people how to use the book. And that's when he realized that people would write in them. He thought, oh, I can't write. Why can't he write? Hmm. Cause I'm a read, I'm an idiot who lives on the bridge. I have no education. <laughs> and he thought, if, if only I learned to read and write. So then he thought to himself, okay, then I will trick somebody to write. Now nearby, in, in the middle of the village, there was a band who was specialized in cooking one item. He would go down to the river that the fisherman would fish and fill a big pot of river water, the cleanest as he could, bring it back into the centre of the village and light a fire under it. He would throw in all kinds of condiments and, so and sauces that he would buy. But the most important ingredient of all would come in the evening time, where he would shout out, Alright, ready, get ready for the community feast! And everybody in the houses would come out with the rats they caught today and throw them in the pot! <laughs> And they had the village was notorious for having rat stew every evening. 
which the thief was very happy for. Of course, if he had the soil of minnows, he would be, he, he would be as thin as a freaking stick. But thanks to that rat stew, he was strong and healthy to think of how to steal from the baker. <laughs> so you, now, after after the rat thief, after the rat stew, the man the man who cooked the rat stew, let's call him the cook. He would write down exactly how many rats they, they cooked today and how and whether it, it tasted good or not. And that was very wise! That was very wise! <laughs> would, would you let me play wise in that situation? <laughs> Eating rats! Okay. Anyway, so the cook... The cook would write down every day after his big stew exactly how, how many rats were cooked and whether it was good that day. Usually the more rats that went into the pot, the better the stew tasted. But there were some rare occurrences where people just added two rats and the soup tasted as well as good as it did 28 rats. And he would take that and read it at night and think on and lie down his bed and think about it. How is it that two rats are better than 28? And so he came to the conclusion that there must be special rats that exist in this world that taste extra nice. In fact, he was since he has read, uh, since he, the, this man can actually read, he's actually read a few cookbooks. He's also read, he also read other books when he was young, and among those books was a was a magic grimoire, which listed down the which listed down certain beasts and monsters. The cook's dream. Uh, besides cooking rats, was to one day partner with a, ma magi a mage and help him write a grimoire on special rats and magic and, and, the, and the mage would help him compile the data into a grimoire. So they will, and then they would become a bestseller and he would become very respected, you know. So his writing skills was improving every day as he learned, because he could learn new words and write it down. But it all had to be about rats. Why rats? Cause that I just told you why the no, grimoire. But, but cause that's what he cooked every day. He could be cooking anything else. This is his destiny, to and now rats. his destiny will come will, will make him to part with the thief. The thief approached him and said, "Like I know that the baker." Knows also knows how to find determine which one are special rats, because the baker thought, no way lah. There's no way you would know how to determine whether it's special rats or not. Even I don't know, and I've been I've been cooking rats for the last eighteen years. Eighteen years. <laughs> he said, oh yeah, yeah. After eighteen years, you still are not any closer to find out which rats are the special rats. Here, I tell you, I have I have your answer. And you say that you know better. And he thought, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, tell me then. And he said, it's got to actually to make a rat a special rat. It must eat cupcakes. And cupcakes. That's exactly what the cook said. Cupcakes. Yes. You see, when a rat eats the cupcakes, especially the one made by that big over there. Its flesh becomes sweet because cupcakes are full of sugar. And when you put them in the pot over the fire, boil them for a long time, the sweetness of the cupcakes mixes with the rat flesh just right. It even makes the fur that you throw in taste good. <laughs> the baker and the cook thought, hmm. Well, even though what he says has no proof, he, I don't have any proof to say that he's wrong. <laughs> I never tried it before. Then he said, "If you're so smart, why do? And we're if you're so smart, then I should be smarter, right? Why don't I just buy some cupcakes and throw them in the pot?" He said, "Ah, that's what you cannot do, because yours is a rat stew. Have you ever tried mixing in meat and cupcake in the same pot?" So he thought to himself, at most he would mix in plain bread, but he would never use plain bread to make the stew, right? The meat must be sweet. You can't just throw sugar inside the pot and expect it to taste good, right? And he said, yes, rat flesh has a certain taste. <laughs> now the cook, you go home and think about this, and tomorrow I will teach you.
how to make the special rat. And so the cook went back home and lied down on his bed and thought to himself, you see what he's saying true, huh? And he thought about it until he fell asleep. Sleep! Sleeping! Okay. You fell asleep! Hold on, it's my turn! Take a card, take So, the cook fell asleep late that night. And when he woke up, he was det- he thought to himself, okay, oh, since there's no since I can't prove the teeth wrong, the only way to do it, the only way to to see if it's cor- this is correct or not, is to follow the teeth plan. I mean the fish's plan because he doesn't know he's a teeth, and test it out. <laughs> and so he went to the teeth, and he said, "All right, I'll hear, I'll test, I'll test out your theory." We'll go buy some cupcakes and feed it to the rats, and then we'll cook the rats. Food. Shit. <laughs> I didn't manage to put one card. And then he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now see this here book. And he's like, that's a book? Don't worry. I want, what we want you to do is, you see, we must track the baker's activities. Because... Then we know exactly when he throws out the cupcakes. We know that the rats will come around that time. And those will be the special rats. We must catch them all. Believe me, the stew, the rat stew will taste different that night. And so the first day, the baker gave up his... He did not the baker, the cook. Instead of preparing a big pot of water like he usually does, sat with that idiot fisherman in, near the river. Why said, don't they just buy freaking cupcakes? <laughs> Shut up! It's the best <laughs> and the fisherman said like, okay, 7 o'clock, he makes the chocolate cupcakes. And he goes down. 7 o'clock, chocolate cupcakes. Okay, 8 o'clock, he takes out the cheese to, 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 to later make cheese sticks. Write this down. And he's like, 8 o'clock, cheese for cheese sticks. 9 o'clock, he puts the, he puts the cheese sticks into the oven. The cheese sticks into the oven. 10 o'clock, <laughs> he goes to the market to buy flour. Goes to the market to buy flour. And that was their whole day. All the way from 7 o'clock in the morning to 7 o'clock at night. 12 hours they sat there and for every 5 minutes they wrote down the baker's activity because they could see everything through the window. What about the point where he throws the cupcakes out and then they go and catch the rats? I'm getting to that part. <laughs> so, exactly at 7 o'clock in the evening, the baker would go to all his confectionery goods that were not sold. And put them in plastic. <laughs> and wrap them up for tomorrow consumption. What? And then he will take out from the fridge the leftover cupcakes that weren't sold. That means like the cupcakes that weren't sold for two days or whatever confectionery you're supposed to use. Open that and began eating. And they watched as he ate. And 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 he ate, and he ate. He ate 17 cupcakes. Four cheesecakes. 23 cheese sticks, 6 loaves of bread, and 7 strawberry encrusted escalades. How big is the maker? <laughs> and they look at each other and like, shit! Whoa! <laughs> he doesn't throw in the cupcakes. How big is the baker? And the cook talk. You lying bitches, I'm bashing you! <laughs> You said he would throw away the cupcakes! And he chased the bloody thief down the road. He picked up the giant pot and right. You have wasted my day. I haven't fulfilled my, my, my duty of cooking rats. I'll tell you, well, there'll be something to cook tonight. And it's gonna be you when he chased the cupcake thief down the road. Kind of the cupcake thief kept shouting down the road. Wait, wait, there's a carriage. There's a carriage gonna hit us. And the, big, and, and the cook was like, no, he will not hit us. And indeed, the carriage did stop. Stop in front of a tree! Oh. Get out from that carriage step! The very wise queen of the kingdom oh. and shout oh. and asked, What are you doing running around with a pot chasing after this person? 
and he and the cook told the queen, this man has said uh, that there was this extremely special rat. That when you cook two of them, it tastes just as good as 20 rats because they eat cupcakes. But then we, we sat and we waited and the baker didn't throw away any of his cupcakes. And then the queen said, but that doesn't prove that his point is wrong. It doesn't prove him wrong at all. I mean, it still could happen. Even the guy just didn't throw his cupcakes. Your, your theory is still not proven wrong. The cook stopped and realized this. The queen rescued him from being whacked by the cook. I was waiting for you to make sure. <laughs> I was Bitch. waiting. And so, yeah. And the queen said, Well, you guys, this is a very interesting theory. Continue on. I'll be back in exactly two days. And Why she, exactly two days? She, she was, bored, she was bored as hell and thought this was quite funny. She will come back later, so she went off. So the cook and the cupcake thief went back to the stinking bridge and he said to himself, Okay. Alright. Name forward. I think might be getting TV sounds. So, they were like, Okay, what do we do now? Do we wait another day? So, then the cupcake thief thought of a very bad evil plan he said okay what we have to do is this man is obviously too smart for us we have to find out exactly where they went to hiding cupcakes aspect smart okay all right we must find what, what was what did you say again well, we must find out where he actually chose the cupcakes yeah, but he ate all the cupcakes everyone saw that there must be some cupcakes he throws away, or else, it, or else the cook, the cook will beat the shit out of him. He must prom- he promised the cook that the rats eat the cupcakes stuff by some way, right? Yeah, but how do they know that it, it must be this exact place? It could be anywhere else. Okay, uh, then you explain. Uh. Okay. So, the cook, I mean the fisherman told the cook, Alright, in the next town over, Near a bunch of ruins is where people throw away unwanted items, food that was spoiling and so on. And that's where all the rats will gather. They Maybe had a that's plan where plan to go there and find a special rat. Then the cook thought, okay. But wait. Why are we going so far away to look for freaking special rats? You told me there was special rats right here. He did. He did. He did. He said that the, the rats would eat the cupcakes. That's how the they were able to cook the two rats that taste as good as 28 rats. So they said, yes, but the ruins there. The ruins there, there, there there's this cave. And that's where all the rats would go in at night, you know? So they're like, fine. They made their way to the ruins. And there was a great big pile of garbage. They came out from the sit from town and the city nearby. So it was a central location where everybody came and threw their garbage they didn't want. Them. But the food scraps would come from the city. And there was uh, there was garbage galore. And the rats infested that place like ants on an anthill. And the whole floor was moving. And they said Holy crap! <laughs> How much rat stew could you make with all of them? And the cook was like, this is where I will live from now on. <laughs> what the well, what about cooking for the town? He's like, oh yeah. Why don't you just come here, get the rats and go back home? Why you want to live here? That's what, what, that's what the fisherman said. He's like, yeah, I'll do that. I brought my pot, I will kill some and throw them in. I'll kill some and throw them in, yeah. I'll kill some and throw them in. So, the, so as soon but as soon as he as soon as he managed to get catch rat, all the rats stopped moving. And the fisherman was like tapping him on the back. Hey, let go of the rat. And he let go of it and all the rest resume. There's something wrong with the rats here. The rats are monsters. And then the sun began going down. And all the rats stopped eating. Stood up on their back legs and turned to face in direct one direction before dashing to one di- in that one direction. 
Yeah. It was like a giant carpet being pulled to one direction. Yeah. A carpet of fur. Rat fur. <laughs> it was like hot <laughs> And all the rats went back to the cave. And then the, 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 the cupcake teeth had to look at each other. And they're like, Where did, the cook said, where did you hear about this, this ruin in this cave? The cupcake teeth was like, you know, um, I'm not really, I, I, I think some, I all heard somebody saying that the baker, you, the, ba- the baker was telling them the story. And he said that everybody should stay away from this place. It's a secret. Is it? Yeah. But the beggar under the the beggar fisherman under the rock knows about it. Because it's a secret that only the beggar on the rock knows. It's a secret that only the baker knows. Okay, why? How he knows this? If so, I mean, I can actually go on. It's actually a secret, yeah. Hooray! It's a secret. And so. They followed the rats that went deep into the cave. There was a beast. <laughs> Damn it la. You know you only let me talk to lies! <laughs> what the heck? I thought, oh my god, what's that? And the beast would pick up the rats. And gobble them up. What? What? Gobble them up. And it's like, what the hell is going on? Wait, 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 the rats ran straight into the cave to be eaten by a monster. But, the, they, as they approached the beast closer, they saw that it was made of rats. A, wait, what? It was, a, a, it was like a big monster that's made from rats joining together. And they were forming a great beast. And you mean like continued. the rat king from the Nutcracker? Yeah, and it was growing bigger. Finally, when you reach them to up to a certain size, it stopped growing. And immediately, it would start dancing around. Around what? The cave. Twirling and twirling and jumping and dancing. The, the cupcake thief and the cook were terrified, but mesmerized at the same time. <laughs> and finally, when it stopped dancing, it began vomiting out cupcakes and confectionaries of every kind. Wait, what? <laughs> and they were like, God damn! What's going on in the <laughs> sick world? <laughs> <laughs> and that's when they turned around and they saw the goddamn baker. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> you were eating that? I want to still eat that! Wait, what? <laughs> Uses how you make your cupcakes? And the baker's like, I've never known how to bake. <laughs> Wait, that's why they're watching the whole day! <laughs> I'm very good at pretending how to bake because, of, because some people have said that I'm... Some people have said that I'm, the way I do things is funny. I mean, all day I pretend to bake. Can I sell the humans the, the cupcakes made by this creature? Yeah. <laughs> what does this even mean? What, what even is that? It is an ancient god. <laughs> it it was once a harvest god, but and people would sacrifice their scrap, their what well, they would sacrifice a certain amount of bio food to it. Anything that used to be food can be sacrificed to it. You in the past, it would have great offerings to sacrifice, and in return, it would give back awesome blessings of food to people. It's a food god, a god of uh, the god of the land, but now. It, all it has to eat is scraps. Then why don't you give it food? And the they, and that's why he asked. And the baker said, like, "I do give it food." And he showed them one of his customers all chopped up. Oh and my they, god! <laughs> and the cook was like, "You, what have you got us into? What have you got us into?" <laughs> and the cook was like, "Honestly, I just wanted some cupcakes. I just." <laughs> Do you have any weapons? I have the pot! And he threw the pot at the big at the big at, at the baker. The baker didn't expect the cook to be so strong to throw a metal pot at him like that. And they ran out of the cave. But the baker again chasing them. And he's like, go away! Go away! <laughs> go away! I can never go away. And the rats all came and bit the baker. What? And then the and then they let him go. And he started chasing after them. And they ran down the same road. Where's the road? Find the road. Over here. 
is running, and they're running, and they heard the baker, and, and they heard the baker's footsteps coming up behind. First, it was like this. Then the baker started to screech and scream. And it's like, and it's like, you now that you know my secret, I can never let you guys go back and form the witch. And the baker started to his footsteps started to get heavy. It went like. They started coming down the road fast and they turned around and they saw his shadow it reached over the forest and he was turning into a great giant version of himself, twisted by the black magic of the house god. <laughs> and he wait, started- wait, 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 wait. <laughs> The red god only has power of food. What the heck has he turned the cook into? A giant. Well, not exactly a giant as big as normal giants, but a horrible disfigurement, a monster plus a man. But he's the, the god of food. What the heck? Again, he's been eating garbage for too long, right? Okay, he's become fine. corrupted and evil. Why do you think he's been eating humans? <laughs> and it's like, you will join us and have food forever. <laughs> and the fisherman stopped for a while. I thought, wow, food forever. Hey, wait, no, that's me! He <laughs> started running. He started running. <laughs> I thought to himself. I can never get out of this. You, you wait, what? <laughs> Wait, now, what? Welcome. You Wait, what? From here. <laughs> okay, what was the last part again? I'm too shocked to think. <laughs> <laughs> and the cupcake team was not like, oh, I can never get out of this. And they ran up the mountain, hoping the hoping the huge giant turn cook, make I mean baker couldn't climb up and kind of climb up a bit as well. They were screaming as if they were insane. That was the problem! That's what he played! They were screaming as if they were insane. And the cook was like, Oh, you think the mountain will protect you? So don't worry. With these great arms and legs with me, I will climb twice as fast as you. And the cook said, This is it. I will never be able to write finish my, my, my dream. My dream of writing about rats and grimoires. And the other guy was like, I still have food in the drop card, so I'm going to let you be in again. <laughs> and the other guy was like, Don't worry. We can pretend to run the mountain and then we'll double back. Okay, you can continue. No wonder. Oh, there we go, another interrupt card. <laughs> all, your, all your cards are interrupt. <laughs> so you, you're just doing this so you can interrupt me, you horrible bitch. Okay. So they try to double back, but then the giant was saw them running back, doubling back, and chase up and continue to chase after them. Luckily, they were close to a boat, and Which they took the boat to the island. In hoping again, to escape. you're jumping. You're the one who's gonna interrupt. It doesn't me. matter. I have interrupt cards. By jumping like that, you you you're gonna get penal penalized. You got three interrupt cards. That's How my luck. That's my luck this turn. You bitch, okay, your turn ah. Take ah. And interrupt. As they were climbing up the stairs, the boat, a big fat rock fell to the boat, cracking the mast. Cracking the mast. They're like, you can't even let us get off on the boat. Okay, okay. You're gonna interrupt me. Duh. Uh, and then there was a bird. Yeah, interrupt ah. <laughs> and the bird started singing, and then it was crushed by the giant. And then the, and then the cupcake, cut. the cupcake tips it. All I wanted in life was to have food. I was often and my parents didn't feed me properly. That's how I ended up like this. Now I'll be eaten, but I'll be taken by some giant to be fed to some rat god. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> a shocking reveal that he was an orphan. Kind of so, they said like, don't worry, if we jump into the waves, the giant can't see us. Why? It's the middle of the night, remember? The night of the rack will change, we just jump into the water, you can't see us. They jump into the murky water. They try to swim. They swim in the dark. They but you see, the, the giant was evil. And his eyes crawled green and saw, and his eyes followed them in the water. And the cook said, as if draw breath, I think he can still see us. Oh, well, don't worry, we'll keep swimming out. But when we get swept away by the tide, don't worry. Everything's gonna be fine. And we just have to wait for the sun to come up. The sun will come up one day. <laughs> the sun will come up one day. Okay, um. You're gonna interrupt me! I can't. <laughs> Unless you, throw, you remove the rule of no interrupt. Uh. Uh, 
<laughs> and then there was a wolf. And they heard the wolf of the back started screaming, start, start howling. And then the wolf got up and started juggling balls. Wait, what? And then he told the cook, Stop! He's beginning to use uh, telepathic at the attacks on us. We're starting to dream of things that we can't see. <laughs> I was like, don't worry. Don't worry. What we have to do is, we have to, f we'll have to take him on head on. Now there's no, he's, if we keep dreaming and, and dreaming of wolves dancing and dancing around, he'll probably put us to sleep. If he puts us to sleep in the middle of the ocean, we'll sink down. Don't. And the cook said, okay, what do we do to defeat our enemy? I said that. If he wants, he wants the sacrifice. He wants, then we'll give it to him. So they went, swam to shore, and the giant began following them. He said, "I know. I think, I think the only way to defeat him is to ask, is to ask the same is to go back and get the how uh, is to go back and undo the spell of what the rats did." And the and the cook was like, "We're really gonna go back there and see the terrible thing?" Yes. I was like, "But what are we gonna do?" Hi. So he opened up his book. So you brought that with you? Yeah. See here. At exactly this time, at night, he leaves, right? We see. In about... We've also, since we've been sitting there the whole day, we've, we also know that at some points at the day, he will light incense. Just get to his house. Break the incense. And maybe something will happen. And Coke's like, fine. So they ran back to the village, with the giant following close behind. As soon as the giant saw the village came by, he started transforming back into his normal self. And he's like, oh god, we can't even convince the people to help us now. And they ran back inside the house and they saw the incense. But then, as Coke was going for the incense, he turned around and saw, and he could grab it and said, okay, I have it. What are you doing? And the cupcake thief was eating the cupcake. You know where the cup comes from. <laughs> Before I watered for all these years. <laughs> and the cook was so disgusted. He said, I can't hold it, and we vomited on the incense. <laughs> as soon as he did, he put out the fire. <laughs> he put out the fire. And the, the, the big officer starts screeching in pain. And started rolling on the ground. And smoke came out from his flesh. <laughs> and he was like, what is, what is wrong with him? They both watched him as he started screaming and burning outside. Burning in the night. <laughs> and he ran around. <laughs> And everyone from the village heard the cook, the baker screaming out, came out and saw him burn, burning in the night. And they said like, what the heck was that? And the cook was like, it was an evil baker. Yes. Watch out, he's coming this way! And he, the evil baker, who, the, the baker who was on fire was running towards the bridge and he jumped right underneath the bridge, setting fire to, setting fire to the to whatever, whatever belongings the stupid cupcake did have. Including his fisherman, his fire, his fisherman rod. Oh. <laughs> <He's> like, oh. <laughs> How will I stop the baker now? Oh wait, I mean, oh wait, yeah. <laughs> and so he lost his home. He lost his home terribly. But every saw, as soon as the baker burnt to it, every realized that they had saved the village from terrible fate. And they told them, fate. and they told them about how the baker at night was cat killing people and capturing them and feeding them to some rats. And the village went to a rampage, brought pitch fox, fish fox and fire and everything. They went down to the cave, but the, and they saw inside the rats were asleep. And they said, "Okay, let's do it." They closed off the cave, trapping the whatever evil thing was in there forever. And they turned around to the baker and the retarded cupcake thief who was still eating the freaking cupcake, with the cook shouting at him, "Stop!" And they say, thank, thank. They all thank the hero who had saved them all. Who was still eating the rat talking. <laughs> I didn't get to play any cards. <laughs>